Hello, and welcome back to the Rel Div 5 B and C recap. I'm Chaos Blue. And joy today is myself here, Gengar. And sadly, the Black Plague has claimed another victim tonight. Or at least continued to claim him. He wasn't he wasn't doing too hot last week either. Yeah. Uh Nose has been sick mm -hmm. for a while now. Oh well. He'll probably will be around next well, week. Well at least Hope. at least you've recovered. Yeah, I mean I've been sick very hard. Like if I get sick mm -hmm. it's like very extreme. But it's not long. It's always like two or three days I feel like I wanna die <laughs> and then mm -hmm. it's done. So, yeah, yeah all better now. I've definitely experienced that. Uh, also ready to kill because I'll be having my game today. I'm pretty hype. Oh yeah, uh, I'm looking forward, forward to seeing that. I'm playing my game tonight as well, actually. Or I, I say tonight, generally speaking, these don't end up going up until the next morning. But, you know, anyway, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's dive into the recaps. Uh, as you can see, there not every game has yet been played. Uh, I think we're actually only waiting on one game, though, which I believe is in progress as we are recording this. Uh, and for some Robert reason... Toss yeah, should be playing Heroes of the Salt Coast right now because I see on mm -hmm. Steam that King of the Cosmos is playing Bumble 2, so, you know, it's probably going to be that. Yeah, we're pretty sure that this is happening literally as we are recording. Uh, so, let's you go worship down. Chaos first. Really famous medic also played mm -hmm. the game now, but I think there was a small mistake. Mm -hmm. in, um, you know, the um, accepting the match results, so we do not see the level of mm -hmm. stuff like that yet. It was actually a full game. This is not like an admin. This is not like an admin conceit or anything. Uh, yep. MVP on a lot line on a loner. That kind of sucks. But the catch kiss warrior got MVP. I bet you're excited for that. If he has enough um, cash, he can always hire the loner. And most loner is never a bad thing to hire. I suppose Just, that's true. You know, it's it's too bad for the name, but you know, mm -hmm. if you're playing a team like Norse, you might as well not name it like. Mm -hmm. no, cycle through them mm -hmm. <laughs> like Red Mad anyway. I'm really looking forward <coughs> to see what he picks for this level up, but we can't see it right now, unfortunately. I also don't know mm -hmm. who died for the chaos, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. This game happened after I last updated my notes for this week, so sorry. Um, <laughs> The okay. your lizard airy and lizard skull Lodge. crushers and uh yeah just wait your lizard airy versus Lodge skull that's a bot game lizard skull crushers is also a bot game yeah so uh where's the third bot game? game I'm not seeing it <laughs> Rottingham Rotters Gobble Gobbos did he play them they actually played this team wasn't here before this is a new team. I, I've heard something about um, somebody actually uh, rolling up, uh, like a friend of somebody who was like, hey, I want to join the league too. So I actually think we have a new team. Let's and it's goblins. goblins! Yep. And no one Played told by... me! <laughs> Played by Twig, 1919. It's a goblin team with uh, all goblins, a bombardier, a loony, and one troll. I think that's not right. Uh, wait. What six six ninety TV, uh, only two hundred K in the bank. So, uh, level two stadium with Knuckles altar. That's not too surprising. Yeah, only they had a death. So I'm thinking their troll probably died. It's very likely. Um, yeah, it's very very likely. Yeah, I'm I'm excited though. I didn't know this was happening. This is a pleasant surprise for me. No Apo, I like seeing that as well. <laughs> Rottingham Rockers also had a dead, but I just quickly checked their team and it's just a Rotter. Uh, sure. Yeah, I... Well, I didn't have that written down either, but... Uh, yeah. Wait, no, wait, wait. No, 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 no. I was wrong. It's oh? a Pestigal who died. Oh. And I think it was like a plus strength or like a plus edgy Pestigal because I remember there was like a very good Pestigal on this team. And it's gone. Mm. I am going to check the replay just very quickly to see uh, whether that's happened. You just go on with the rest of the schedule. Okay then. Uh, you check uh, check League League Manager actually. That'll tell you exactly what died. Oh yeah. Um, 
I don't have I don't have it up right now because I'm streaming my visuals. Um, okay, so the next team, while well, Gungor's looking at that, uh, we're sort of working our way up from the bottom this time around. So the Hufflepuff Heroes versus the Pantheon Passers. The Passers won two to zero against the Kepri. Uh, they did suffer some losses for their trouble, though. Uh, the dead player is a was a rookie catcher. This Blitzer, Ooh, of course, so who got MVP, that's just uh, badly hurt, it looks like. But there is a Miss Next Game catcher as well, and a minus strength on the lineman. So their next game, the Pantheon Passers, is going to be hard, if only because they're going to be two catchers down. Look at the Hufflepuff's Heroes Tomb Guardians, by the way. Oh yeah. They uh, can my... start like none other. Mighty blow on everything. <laughs> that's basically what you want. Mm-hmm. Only thing better would be rolling some doubles, I think. Ah, and you know what I just noticed? Hmm? The Capri have an interception. <laughs> oh, that's going to sting. This would have been a crazy match to watch. Uh, I'm not sure which uh, Capri is responsible for it. Uh, these are all these are all like unpronounceable names. <laughs> I have something uh, very interesting also to uh, announce. Apparently, this goblin team did not have a uh, dead uh, troll. They play with one troll, and they use Ripper. Oh, Ripper died. No. No? They just induced Ripper. Oh. And they use Ripper as their, like, you know, as their, like, troll. I mean, I like that, actually. I'd like it better. They do have a death, though, so something died. Yeah, you know what died? They're fanatic. <laughs> of course. Jetty Turkey, the fanatic mm -hmm. died. Uh, but yeah, I famously won the Losers Cup of Huge Jackman with a Ripper Inducement team, so I love a Ripper Inducement team. Uh, only this one probably actually gets a higher Ripper every game. Uh, yep. I gotta tell you, Inducement oh. teams are a lot better when you actually hire a star player. They're also a lot better when you just mm -hmm. join in middle of the season when everybody's a little bit built. That too. And I was, I was gonna get to that actually. If they re really wanted to, the Gobble Gobbles probably could have run a three troll lineup for their whole season, but they would have had to give up bribes to do that. So I can yeah. understand why they didn't. Either way, back to Hufflepuff and Pantheon mm -hmm. Pants. Intercept you said. Yeah. Uh, check which which skeleton did that because I want to know. Uh... There is one skeleton with two SPP, Neftis, Her. Hishana, I think it's him, but I'll check it. Uh, there are three different skeletons who could have done it. Uh, the yeah. one you pointed out, as well as Pestu and Utek. It would be cool if the Tomb Guardian did it. It would. And sort of typical, actually. Uh, blocks favoring the Kepri, not too surprising. Um, yeah, I'd say that the Elves took a real beating in this match, but they managed to out-position the Kepri enough to score twice. So, yeah, getting that's out what happened. Escaped. I, look, I like how these mm -hmm. growers, like started really hot, but I actually are starting to like fall apart. And not that I'm anti-Elf or something. <laughs> I mean, I did say that I was like a huge racist versus other races, except Kemeny, but... Um, they are... <laughs> Kind of, you know, experience with Elf Team's experience. Hot start, mm -hmm. and then just you break at some point. I mean, it, the Pro Elves are probably the Elf Team who can most afford to lose Elves. Like, it's easiest for them to replace dead players out of all the Elf Teams. But it still really sucks to see the team coming apart like this. But despite yeah. that, they're, they're still doing pretty well. So maybe they'll keep it up to the end of the season. Uh, anyway... The last game we will be covering tonight uh, prob in this division, probably, is the High Fivers versus Organized Crime, which is a 1-1 draw for the Ogres. That's basically a win. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty much a very nice win, but Organized Crime was a team with like all the break tackle, right? Yeah, all the break tackle and no Nobblers. Um, I think a Nobbler died this game, actually. No, obviously not. Uh, I don't actually write down dead Nobblers on my notes, because who, who cares? It's a Nobblar. Uh, but, Organized Crime induced Dribble Snot this game. Uh, uh, seems like a pretty popular pick for Ogres, and I can hardly blame them. But also, he rolled doubles on this guy, I think, actually. Yeah, this guy. 
the MVP getter, and he got block. Pretty nice. Just a second, by the way, I'm looking where mm -hmm. they actually did the pass. All spot loose. Let's see. Blocks are fairly even, but a massive number of KOs inflicted by the ogres. So Claw did oh not. Oh my do... oh. god! It was a tomb guardian, I... wasn't it? It was a tomb guardian. Yes. <laughs> Is it the so... tomb guardian who leveled up? No, on turn forty, ah. a tomb guardian named uh, named Pestu Napes uh, did a interception right in front of the elf's face. Because that would have been perfect if if the Tomb Guardian leveled up off of an interception. It's on turn 14 if you want to see it. I might have to go back and watch that later, but I I don't I don't have time to to look for it for this video. I encourage everyone else yep. watching to look for it as well, though, while it's still in the uh, the replay reel. Uh, so Anyways. yeah. Anyways. Ogres. Organized climb indeed. All the big decks. Blocks and Necro are pretty time. even. Ogres inflicted a ton of KOs though. though. Uh, looks like... And they had a lot of ball possession actually. So it looks like the Necro really had a hard time this game. I mean it is Ogre so it's always going to be a hard time. I mean for the Ogres usually. Yeah but still. It's always uh, nasty facing six big ogres who you just smash everything. I'm not sure how they managed to get 40 yards running with, with only 6% ball possession. That's a little suspect to me. I think the statistics might be lying to me here. Um, but even, even so, this looks like, quite a, like it was quite a game. And look at all of that SPP on ogres. That's 14 SPP spread across three different ogres. Then I, I'm upset I didn't watch this game. This looks like it was a great one. Uh, but next it, up we will yeah. discuss two teams. Yep, uh, the last two teams. Well, not counting the goblins, which we sort of just went over quickly as we discovered them. Uh, these are the last two teams <laughs> we have left to go over for this division. Um, we will. Probably be doing something a little different for next week for it because of that, but we haven't figured out what yet. We'll let you know w once we do. We also are looking for the next formats because we also have to like you know taking account that we still have to do a few teams for five C. Mm -hmm. We might just do like a quick recap over every team or something in mm -hmm. the time comes. Also, in the middle of the season, we will have a small overview and look at like how the divisions are standing and how everybody's doing and how things are. It will be a little bit of a longer episode, so yeah. helpful. That will probably be more around season... Season? No. <laughs> more, more around week seven or eight. Probably. Yep. Uh, with that being said, uh, let's look at our first team, or second team, I guess, if you count the goblins, and I always do. Uh, your Lizardary! By Tsu or Coach by Tsukari. Enter team motto here. You gotta, you gotta put in that team motto. Uh, that's why you lost his Croxigore. Yeah, that's why you lost your Croxigore. Uh, so, this team looked a lot better last week, I'm sad to say. Uh, in his last game, <coughs> in his, that is, because he had a, he has an admin game this week. So, in his week yeah. four game, <coughs> he lost his blocks, cro his block Croxigore and a Saurus. He's replaced the Croxigore with one that doesn't have block, obviously. And he will probably be able to get a source off of his admin win, admin week winnings. Uh, but there's still some good things to see here. He has a level three source, <coughs> and blow, so that'll level up. Uh, <coughs> Sorry, yeah. He has a dodge source, which is actually pretty close to leveling as well. If he, if this guy can actually manage to pick up the ball. This is going to turn cool, into a blotch yeah. source, which will be awesome. I actually might want to go for break tackle first, but that's just me. Uh, break tackle would be great as well, but I think block would help level up faster. Is the thing? Yeah, that's true. It'll I mean, like a fat Amazon. Either way, I think your next two pickups are break tackle and block. It's just a matter of which order you take them in. 
thing is though, Sakari, even though he has lost very important pieces now, and, you know, a blocks a gore, mm -hmm. which is very sad for him, he still is, and this is pretty impressive, five wins, zero losses, and zero draws. Nobody has beaten Sakari yet. Uh, although, and having it's... said that, he is the... He is the first and so far only coach to have gone through all three of his admin win games. So That's he's playing. He, he is playing every game from here on out, whether he wants well, to or not. Well, I guess all the extra money mm -hmm. is going to help him rebuild the team a little bit because he did get, get a real bashing. But yep. now he has three team rolls, apothecary, full team, good level up, so he can start. Yep, that is true. Uh... Except for a Blox Croxagore. Oh, he has the Magic Dome as well. That's a good pick. Yeah, except for having a Bloxagore, he has just about everything he could want on his team for its current level of development. Um, just the doubles again. His skinks, look, his skinks look fine as well. Uh, not overdeveloped, which is about where you want them to be, I think. Yeah, and you want to have like one or two skills, and if they don't mm -hmm. have anything, but just no. And his TV is not bloating. Yeah, that's also very important. Mm -hmm. Thing is, though, you have to count in one more sort of, so this one more time you'll have to mm -hmm. count in ATK. Yeah, this so... Thing is 1,300 mm -hmm. normal. So, all this said, uh, I would like Neville Longnose Leopard to be the scoring skinks for his next game. I guess he doesn't really have a choice with an admin game. Really, for that one, you want the source to be scoring. <laughs> we'll see. We will see. I mean, um, we can do like some of the people I've done in the past, but that might be the idea. I don't think he's in a position where he wants to fire all his skinks, though, is the thing. <laughs> maybe, if, anyway. maybe if he had a full bank, but he doesn't. Uh, anyway. Next team. Yeah. Next team. Next team. Really famous medics. Really famous medics. Wait, did we already... Uh, What's the next team? No, it's really famous medics. Yes. Okay, so I was going to talk about this one, uh, a Chaos team, which has a... <clears throat> Catch Chaos Warrior. Mm -hmm. A... Claw Block Beastman. And a Mighty Blow Dodge Warrior. I mean... Chaos Warriors and Beastmen, they can grow out to be really powerful beasts, and having like certain combination of skills can be really interesting and really powerful. But there is a certain order of how you do things. I mean, in fairness, starting he took he did claw... take Mighty Blow before Dodge, so you know at least he's gonna level up quickly. <laughs> yeah, but taking Claw before Mighty Blow generally mm -hmm. is not a good thing because Mighty Blow is a lot more likely to do damage than Claw. Mighty Blow, but, or Claw First is good if you're playing against a ton of AV9. But, that's the only reason why you would take that. Mm -hmm. But then, if your killer levels up, you give him Mighty Blow. Mm -hmm. You give him Mighty Blow. Mm -hmm. I will repeat. Yep. You give him Mighty Blow. And, not a block. And and the you... problem with this is that mm -hmm. it's going to take ages for him to level up. Yeah, it will. Uh, there's only one block on the team as well, so that's probably going to hurt a lot. But, you know, at the same time, I'm looking at this team and I'm sort of thinking, this is probably a lot how Iron Master's Chaos team started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this is maybe what you call a, like, damn, I need a block, I'll take block situation. Mm -hmm. But then again, I sort of not agree with it, because in my eyes, the ideal, you know, killer killer has Mighty Blow or Claw mm -hmm. to start with. Then Mighty Blow Claw, then Piling On, then Tackle, so you, you know, hit on two dices, and then Juggernaut. Mm -hmm. I actually do not go for Block, because generally, you sort of need to protect your killers, and they're mm -hmm. going to go on the ground anyway. They don't have any use out of Block. I they don't really need it. I sort of agree. Like, Chaos, I think around six to eight of your players should be taking block first, but your killers are not among them. Um, I think your Chaos Warriors are the ones that really need the block first. Mm -hmm. The only reason you wouldn't take block first on Chaos Warrior is if you want to try to develop them really, really quickly. Well, that's the thing, though. You can just get Mighty Blow and then mm -hmm. block, and that's how exactly. I usually do it. Uh, 
By the way, did we ever establish whether Catch was deliberate or a misclick? Because I feel like this is the sort of thing where he maybe wanted to dodge and he clicked Catch on accident. I think it might be a misclick, but even if it isn't, it's not actually a bad thing to have on the Chaos Warrior because the crazy abilities they have to grow long legs <laughs> uh, as block and just become a intercepting threat. Which would be funny to see, to be honest, but it's like having a, um, what I would like to call Iron Master piece mm -hmm. on your team. Uh, while that is true, you can do all the same things on a Beastman, and the Beastman is better at it. I'll, I'll tell you one thing, though. He has Dr. Evil, which is a plus string Beastman. Yeah. And most people might think, like, hmm, maybe I can make a killer out of him, but honestly, making a server slash, uh, ball uh, stripper mm -hmm. is a really interesting choice to do with like this guy if you go like juggernaut wrestle frenzy tackle strip ball this guy could be like a real threat mm -hmm. 20 team. that or else you just turn him into your fifth chaos warrior is also a solid strat yeah just make him like a solid wall with mm -hmm. dodge and guard and uh no stadium enhancements here uh, I mean, despite the odd skill choices, I think this is actually a solid-looking team. It has a it has a decent amount of development for Chaos us at this stage. Maybe maybe it could have a little bit more, but I wouldn't be sweating it with this level of development. Um, he might also get a new player because he's mm -hmm. sitting at the rank of one ninety k. Yeah, there's that as well. Or it might be a minor top for me. Uh, with this team, I could genuinely see them doing that uh, <laughs> or they can almost afford a stadium upgrade so honestly they might go for that as well if they decide they don't want an extra kick player i would expect one or the other mm -hmm. i think i would probably go for the extra care uh player first but there is something to be said for getting the early the early stadium uh promises to be seen mm -hmm. uh, either way yeah. Leaderboard wise, he's sitting at three wins and one loss, which isn't bad. And Sakari is actually has no losses. He's going to be at the top of the leaderboard, but he, that is a little bit deceptive, as stated. If he keeps winning, then he's going to be in a solid position. But he right. has run out of admin games. Right now, I think it's going to be between the Cowboy Dwarfs, the really famous medics. The Pantheon passes, your Daddy, and the Rottingham Hawkers get the number one seed spot to get to the playoffs. I mean, yeah, the the five, the the top five teams are probably a safe bet. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's go to uh, the next division now because we're not supposed to talk about this too much. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, or actually, quickly recap um, predictions for next week. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, you saw them. Still looking at them. Uh, let's see. Well, the game that stuck out to me here is, of course, the goblins versus you worship chaos because I didn't know there was a goblin team until just fifteen minutes Double ago. Um, you worship chaos. I would be surprised if Ka if the uh, Norse did not win. Uh, yeah, Norse is a bad team to be facing for goblins, but on the other hand. <laughs> Goblins also like to face dolls because of AV7, so mm -hmm. this is going to be a really bloody match. Not only that, but uh, You Worship Chaos is... I think it was the... So, well, the TV is not out of this world, but, I mean, the Goblins are going to get, I want to say, over 500k in t inducements. We mm -hmm. know part of that's going to be Ripper, we know part of that is going to be Bribes, but there's still... There's enough there for some wiggle room, is what I'm saying. And not only that, it's going to be a home game for the Gobbos, so they get extra money for star players, effectively, as well. I think that the match that I want to see next week, which is going to be an interesting one, it's the um, Rottingham Rockers versus the Pantheon Passes. Because the Pantheon Passes are sold of recovering from last week's Barrage. And now they have to face the Nurgle team, which is the Rotting Rockers, which actually are pretty built already with 1,500 TV. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be interesting in how, how the High Elves, I mean the Pro Elves, are going mm -hmm. to deal with yeah. all this. 
if the elves manage, I mean, if the elves do manage to win, they will be in a solid position for the rest, of, for possibly the rest of the season. But if they lose, it could be a, it could be the start of a death spiral. They will have to face three mighty blows, maybe four mighty blows. That actually would be smart. Give Stiff Bird the mighty blow now that he leveled up, and they dirty players. So that could stay if used wisely. Mm -hmm. Definitely an interesting game, and and actually a really skill based game as well. Trying to pass around, n trying to play a pass game around Nurgle always is. I mean, it's also having a few experienced coaches, so this is probably one to watch. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, on that note, we can move on to five C. Vision five C. Uh, this one has only one game that is not yet being played. Uh, not sure if they're playing it right now or not. Uh, no idea. But my notes are updated on this one, unlike the other one. So we went bottom to top for the la last div. Let's do it here as well. Say hello to my little friends versus pro in a party, with the elves winning 5-0 to zero against the goblins. <laughs> What's up with these elves winning like 5-0 to zero versus all these stunty team? Holy hell. I mean, I think you just answered your own question. Let's look at Pro in the party and let's look, look, look at history. 0-5, uh... 3-1, then 0-1, which is surprising. 3-1, 5-0. These elf has been scoring, scoring, and scoring mm -hmm. on everybody's face. It's uh, every. And, uh... The goblins took some interesting inducements in this game as well. Uh, I don't know how many bribes they had, but they did induce Scrapper Sorehead. If you don't recognize the name, that is the star player Pogor, uh, who doesn't use a bribe because he doesn't have secret weapon, but he does have a uh, dirty player. His really, he doesn't actually have that much on the regular Pogor. He has dirty player, and that's about it. And it costs 130, I think. I think he has an extra agility or movement or something. No, he does not. I, does he I double checked. <laughs> he has three agility like a regular goblin, and he has seven movement like a regular Pogor. Okay. Next game. Uh, actually, one, Still to be one quick thing to note the goblins did take a uh, wrestle on a goblin who leveled up. So, you know, that's something. That's uh, something. Yeah, there, it was up to discussion in this call, mm -hmm. and I think it's a choice because now he has a ball sacker. Yeah, I like wrestle on a goblin. It's better than block most of the time on Stunty. The only person you want to get block on is the Pogor. Uh, on goblins, uh, Pogor, and, even uh, and the Fnatic. And even then, wrestle might be interesting because your Pogor can leak stuff. Mm hmm. Uh, anyway, next match. Shrek, Shrek All-Stars versus Korn's Glory. The world is facing Korn's Glory. 1-0 to zero win for the for the Chaos team. Uh, they took a miss next game on a Chaos Warrior. <coughs> uh, not a lot of... Well, three injuries aside, that's not that bad. Uh, the Ogres, yeah, on the other that's... hand... To be honest, good mm -hmm. that he did not get that much damage because that was a dangerous scale team mm -hmm. to be facing um, uh, Raven Post team. I think they had a few mighty blow claws already. If Having I said that, he did take an armor <laughs> break on his guard ogre. Holy hell, just look at this chaos team for a second. This is something that personally would be like how my chaos team would look like after a while. Uh... The only difference would be that I also would have Mighty Blow on the two tackles. Yeah. Uh, wow. That's a... Uh, hmm. That's what they call an aggression team, and I like it. Yeah, this is just a kill-everything team. There... <laughs> There's not much attempt to do anything else. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I wanted to mention <coughs> for this game, Ravenpo induced Dribble Snot. Again, popular pick. I already mentioned his Ogre got armor busted, and this guy here who got MVP... Uh, no, not that guy, actually. A different ogre who leveled up. Also rolled doubles. Uh, no, his block ogre rolled doubles and took dodge. So now he has a blodge ogre. What? Yeah. 
that's a thing. Oh my god. Anyway. He has a, he has a block, mighty blue piling on Ogre. He has a blood sugar, which is probably going to get break tackle. He has a edge of Ogre. What is this thing? Yeah, I know, right? It's amazing. Uh, so, anyway, moving on. Iron's Forge versus Grungy Desserts. One by the dwarves, two to zero. Uh, not a lot of... Well, the dwarves broke armor and the chaos didn't. I think that's, it's quite clear that's what happened here. Looking uh, at Iron's Forge, he has two blotch pieces blocked on everybody. Uh, mighty blow upon, but like this is just a standard wolf team. Yeah, similar Same. number of uh, blocks made. Chaos inflicted one KO. Dwarves inflicted four KOs and two injuries. And they have like three t over three times as many armor breaks total. And. Yes. Brandy deserts, not chaos. Uh, and the only interesting thing to mention here, uh, it was desserts, a pretty standard um, game, is that the desserts induced Max Spleen Ripper, who is yeah. the Chaos Chainsaw, which is like a Chaos Warrior with a chainsaw. Stop saying Chaos. Chaos, Chaos, Chaos. <laughs> it's Nurgle, sorry. I mean, Max Spleen Ripper is a Chaos Warrior, though. <sighs> That's true. That is something I will not um, be against, but it's Nurgle team. I mean, in my defense, they look very similar. <laughs> sort of. One it... is rotting and the other one has mighty blow and everything. Yeah, I mean, like, if you don't see the green, it. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, this was a pretty standard game, I think. <coughs> yeah. I mean, early on, it was a huge, mm -hmm. huge bandage versus Nurgle, so. Especially with zero riddles, there wasn't going to be much that Staticus can actually do versus the dwarves. Doesn't Staticus have one reroll now? Uh... Yeah, still, one reroll is one reroll. Yeah, it, it, true enough. Uh, so, the next game is Jazz Poison versus the Grand Bleu. One by the Underworlders, two to one against the. These are Wood Elves, right? Yeah, the Wood Elves. Yep. Uh, we actually just saw that. An interesting thing here, the MVP Lino took guard on a double, and the elves also, also suffered a miss next game on a war dancer, which is going to suck for the next game. Hugely interesting. Jazz Poison is now the proud owner of a edgy war goblin. Oh yeah, that happened. Uh, that happened a couple of weeks ago, and it is still amazing. It's amazing, and it's going to stay amazing. Also, they're all uh, a few SPP away from having Block, Mighty Blow Claw, Block, Mighty Blow Claw, and Mighty Blow Claw <laughs> piling on. <laughs> of course they are. That is, yeah. Yeah, this is a really okay. scary team. Like, this is... If you want to see a solid Underworld team, look at Jazz Poison. Uh... Yes, yeah, it's, it's starting to look amazing. Mm -hmm. Unsurprisingly, they have tripled the armor breaks to the elves as well. Uh, yeah. Moving on once so, more. Oh, the, wait. Uh, Le, Le Glon Bleu is looking okay, though, still with the movement by mm -hmm. Wall Dancer. But skill up, so nothing bad there. Yeah, like, fortunately, they didn't take any permanent injuries. They just, uh, their next game is going to be a little rough with the Miss Next game on the War Dancer. But their overall health is still looking pretty good. Next up is my favorite team. Can we do it? With we can. Versus Doom Anvils. Uh, which can is... Can taking another win? 5-0 mm -hmm. as Camry. That's amazing. That's just artwork. That is amazing. Then... Still having the same problem, not having Mighty Blow on his last two Tomb Guardians, but they're getting there, they're getting there. Mm -hmm. Uh, 7 SPP on one skeleton. Lots of yes. SPP on the Doom Anvil side. He does have, seem to have the same problem I do, unless that my one skeleton with 30 players gets all the SPP, and my other skeletons are just left in the dust. Mm -hmm. Palm Tackle Blitz Rock. Um, Ooh, that's, that's, that's how you build them, to be honest. Mm -hmm. 
that's basically how all my blitzers are at this point. Mm -hmm. The only difference is that one of them is strength up. And uh, also worth mentioning, uh, Doom Anvil got plus strength on... Uh, I wrote it down as Longbeard in my notes, but I'm pretty sure that was a Chaos Morph. Let me have a look. Plus strength on a Chaos Morph. <sighs> yep. I find this such a painful choice always. Like, on the one that's really nice to have a Black Hawk, basically, mm -hmm. with Block Tackle and Dick Skull, and, you know, all the things that the Dwarf also do, but on the other hand, I'm like, that would have been a Claw. I mean, it sucks to give up the Claw, but I think Chaos Dwarves are a team who really, really benefit from taking all the strength that they can. It's sort of the same case as with the Dwarves. Where they, have, they pile on so much guard that they're solid against you until yeah. the other bash teams start getting guard, then they sort of want more strength. I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, you're right in that. It's just that uh, it's always a heart breaking choice. Mm hmm. But good uh, on him that he got it. Good on him that he got it. Mm hmm. Next so, match is the Frozen Dead Lord versus the Royal Rumble Boys. A 1-1 draw. The Every time I see Frozen Dead North, I think it's a Nor Norse team, but no, it's it's Undead. Or Necro? It's, un it's Necro. Uh, it's Necro, right? <laughs> Everything North is usually Norse-related, and mm -hmm. then, hey, it's an Echo team. It just <laughs> throws my brain off. Uh, but this was a pretty standard... Uh, Bogfest. Not a lot of injuries. A couple of, uh, well, a couple of injuries from the inflicted by the Royal Rumble bo Boys, but nothing permanent. Uh, lots of blocks, but not a lot of, well, I mean, like I said, nothing permanent. One of this them probably went, like... no, <coughs> neither of them could grind out the other. This is what I would like to call a very safe mm -hmm. game with all the blocks. He's sticking with his uh, team, going for the god still. I mean, not much difference against last time as well, but it's looking good. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's not much more to say about that. So let's move yeah. on to our team showcases. Well, the Royal Rumble Boys I was going to review anyway, so now we're going to look at a game and the Royal Rumble Boys. So, what do we see? What do we see? We see a Mighty Blow Claw Chaos Warrior. Ready to get block very early, because of all the SPP is going to get now. Mm -hmm. And ready to become a huge wall. We see two Pestigors. One of them having Mighty Blow. One of Both of them having block? I like having two Pestigors as a killer though, and I like having two of them as a ball carrier. I think two of his ball carrier ones, they might have died, they might have suffered injuries, but he's probably recovering them. But then again, this is the same case that I had with the beastmen. I do not like having block on my killers if they're beastmen or bestigals. Mm -hmm. I like to have two bestigals with mighty blow claw, piling on tackle, and juggernaut on skills like that, not block. Yeah, I really agree. I would really have to agree with you. I like having one Pestigor who is a dedicated killer, and that I wouldn't take block on. I like having one who's a sacker, and that would be a wrestler. And I like having one who's a ball carrier. I would, Thanks. I wouldn't build them in that order, mind you. But those are the first three Pestigors I would want. Triple H is now a block Pestigor, so that means he can still be built into a ball carrier. Perfect. That time. is true. And then I like and, having the first. And uh, despite our block concern with John Cena. He is actually only 3 SVP away from leveling, so I expect he'll probably take Claw off of that level. Uh, I guess team-wise, John Cena needs to have block because he does throw a lot of shoulder blocks. <laughs> mm -hmm. What he does is 5 um, level shuffle. Two of the Nurgle Warriors are at 5 out of 6 SVP, so they're really close to leveling up. And, uh, of course there's the Rotter, who has, I want to say, 3... yep, 3 MVPs. That kind of sucks. Uh, the dirty play uh, wrestler? Mm hmm. I have two of those. I fired one of those because he was strength busted. I mean, that's when you fire it, right? It's a rotter. Yeah, I, but, I mean, dirty play is always fun to have. Mm -hmm. I do not like going under two dirty players. That, true enough. Uh, and the plus movement on a rotter, which 
as we talked about before, it's thematic, but maybe not good. <laughs> it's interesting, at least. <laughs> it's, it's a beastman without claw, but then game mode. I mean, horns. I mean, can you really call that a beastman? Well, I mean, horns is a big deal. Stuff. I guess you give it horns on its next level up, then you can call it a beast. <laughs> I can. I guess you can also call it a human for twenty game mode. Uh, except it has decay. I don't know. It's a weird pick, but it's it's interesting. And honestly, I don't think it's hurting the team too much. He's just a sexy boy. Sexy boy. Sorry, like, it's not my intro, the intro team. Nurgle's <laughs> always bloaty, but this team isn't too bloaty yet, so it's probably fine keeping it. And it's a rotter, so it it'll it will trim itself in time. What is the next team we fall today? Uh, yeah, the team I am looking at. I figured I would stay on theme and go with the Cantacaros Cretaceans. Sorry, I can't pronounce it, but yep. let me try. The team that still has to play play a map match mm -hmm. combat. Cantacaros Cretaceans. Damn kids, get off my super continent. This is an interesting team because he probably fired all of his kings. The one that's uh, called actually I mean uh, movement up. That's new. He did when I last looked at this team, he had not done that. Uh so that's that's quite interesting. Uh, um, that's Yeah, I mean he might have had a skink. I wonder if picked up. I wonder if that's an anticipation for his next game going into uh, into admin territory. Yeah, I don't know what's actually going on with this match, so... We might see this team next week, we might I... not. Let's just click to the team itself. He has a Movement 9 Skink, that's the start of mm -hmm. the game. Yeah, uh, Movement 9 Skink, 2 block Soros, and a guard Crocs. Not a lot of de development here, uh, unfortunately, but the development he has is all good. Nothing bad on this team, and I mean, and uh, I mean he's three zero and one, so it's not like it's not like he's doing poorly. Um, he, already faced, he already faced a high progressive Corn and Glory team, so you mm -hmm. know he, he doesn't have to go through that again. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see the plus movement skink get some skills. Yeah, I'd like to see it get some skills. I imagine it will pretty quickly as well. Um, I'd like to see some Saurus level, some more Saurus leveling up. Uh, there's one five out of six, at least. So some Saurus, it's ha always hard to pull off, but some Saurus ball could do a lot of work for this team. Yep. Uh, but the thing let's, is... Um, let's wrap it up anyway, because I actually have to stop my match soon. Okay, uh, I need, I need to go make dinner soon, so... Let's look at the uh, next week, what we have in schedule. Yeah, let's do that. Um... So, I like the... Should I call Stars versus Kennedy? Do it as we can. We have an unbeaten Kennedy team versus Ogres. Ogres have more strength 5, they have crazy players, but they have small alignment, and the Kennedy have some great, amazing blitzes. This is going to be a really funny match to watch. Uh... Two great personalities and coaches, because McMackey because this Raven is mm -hmm. going to be a dick. I don't think I don't think I'd be contentious when I say that I think Capri have the advantage in this match, but I agree with you, it'll be really fun to watch. Uh I will take Jazz Poison versus Iron's Forge. Jazz Poison has been on fire, but if anything's gonna stop them, it's gonna be the dwarves. Well, Chaos Dwarves. Yeah, they're still dwarves. No wait, no, Doom Travels the Chaos Dwarves. Iron Am Iron Forge is the regular the dwarves. We have too many dwarves, okay? I was about, I was about <laughs> to say. So yeah, Jazz Poison versus Iron Forge, a good old dwarf team with blotch and everything versus a killer uh, underworld team. This will be fun as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Jazz Poison will have a small inducement, so we might see a chainsaw. Yeah, so I'm gonna protect an upset here and say that Jazz Poison will take it narrowly. Against the dwarves. And that the troll will lie or something. Uh, I mean, it's a troll, so. It might regen. <laughs> they never do. No way. That was it for tonight, folks. We wish you 
very happy matches for next week. This was Gengar. I'm going mm -hmm. to be out now. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I will let Kael Seblu finish it. Yeah. Uh, he, you, you say that, but I don't, not sure I have much more to add. And I'm also need to go out and I need to go make dinner. <laughs> so until next week, this is be when yeah. Nose Dice will definitely probably be here. Uh, this has been the recap. Good luck with your games. Bye.